We are hopping on. There you are. You hear me okay? It's the Disla. How are you, sir? Yeah. I'm have, having some technical difficulties here, but I think oh, I'm just okay. going to go with the iPad. Yeah. The Mac Mini is... Uh, oh, you you hear that. me okay, though? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Better than we did okay. uh, last time but, uh, at your office. Well, this this is Verizon, so it's better than Spectrum. Actually, I'd like to have put the... Uh, new router on it's it's great but we still good. have some issues with the line speed i think oh that's not a good we need to, well we have ip phones i think we need to have a separate line for the phones and a separate for the computers inspector would we'll be happy to uh charge us twice makes sense it's greg hello greg dude i hate quickbooks so much i've been that, uh, uh, well that's what I wanna, we, that I meeting every for. day we're moving over to chase so oh is that what the meeting is for? yeah they're gonna move us with the tech guy well at least they'll be able to put me on as an authorized user right away so we don't have to fight you to yeah. to get answers if i need to on uh on your taxes remodeler, remodeler, okay no you're you're doing his taxes i've been doing his taxes well, he does <laughs> yeah. well yeah no i do his pnl and i work with steve and we we force bob by his fingernails to give us answers that we need for certain things all right off so it's all right yes. off right 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 i'll never forget my first soiree like five years ago into balancing the books and i was like bob is this client what is this client gift <laughs> victoria's <laughs> secret in south carolina or something <laughs> <laughs> well that, that led to a commission one way or the other sales of work. it know, always does it yeah, always you, does it always has hidden expenses too Man, well, no, QuickBooks has just been the bane in our existence because we're always, you know, we'll change a credit card or it'll delink the account from PNC or whatever because PNC changes their rules and regs. And then I go in four months later and there's like 700 transactions that I have to itemize for them. And well, and then, um, yeah, with, with the changeover, I'm hoping it's going to make it. PNC screwed me again. It, it was absolutely, they called me this week. And they just pissed me off to the final point. I called the local manager, branch manager. I said, so are we canceling that, the PNC credit card then and going with the Chase one? Probably. The business yeah, card? probably. Where's is this, Randy? Was this, uh, I thought I saw him. They piss you off with respect to a loan or with, with your yeah. personal yeah. No. accounts? Yeah. Hang on, let me tell them. Well, the PPP thing just came through and I just got an email stating that I wasn't actually hey guys, eligible for the full amount that they back. gave Is me. Is it urgent? Oh, no, it's not. It's not. So that I okay, actually, right. you got it. Bye -bye. I got like twenty three thousand for my personal people for my my personal LLC PPP, not my, my LLC, and then now they're saying I was only eligible for nineteen thousand, so I'm on the hook for like sixteen hundred bucks of unforgivable PPP loan because they. Oh, this is they is, is this, the regulation. Um, this is on my side. I don't even. I haven't even looked on We Sell Louisville yet. I'm just talking about my own. Did you? Uh, did you get one of the, like the little small five or ten grand? You know, first yeah, couple I did. Weeks? So that's probably what okay, it was. That's that it. The ELID yeah. or whatever that the emergency grant. That well, the weird sense. thing is, what we had to do is we had to pay that back, and then they refunded it to us. It was really an odd thing. We went through Central Bank, but we got ten grand, and apparently we had to pay it back to Central Bank, and then the SBA rebated it to us. So it oh, might so be yeah. something similar with you all. That's right. You guys got the full ELI. Yes. Yeah, see, we have PNC. I'm still trying to figure it out because they kept they sent emails where they're basically like, "We're kicking the can down the road. The government's changed the rules and regs." Yeah, that's so exactly what. Yeah, and it. so I sent. I am. That's why I'm. I'm over it. I'm over them. Yeah. Well, that's why you you have yeah. to have an yeah. accountant to do this last year's taxes. Did Randy show up? He's just jumping on, I Mr. Rocky. Coming. Are you there? Come on, Randy. He's got to sign That's on I'm using dial-up. I'm not seeing Greg. Yeah, where are you, Greg? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm just working on a whole bunch of stuff. Do, 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 do. We got a lot going. We got a lot going. There's. Come on, Randy. Yeah, hello, brother. There he is. Hey, Hi. now. Hi there. Yeah. Howdy, Randy Rocky. Rocky. I'm sorry. I was about ready to get on at 255, and yeah. one of your you. wonderful real estate agents, Steve Miner, had a question. Got it. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, he, okay. Well, we can, that's not a problem. Are we all ready? Is we ready, Freddie? Yes. Yep. We, right. we, yes. Got, we got a yes. bunch of stuff. Um, I think we're going to take this down a couple of notches. 
We got a bunch of sales, sales market rates. Okay. All right. Let's do that. I'm just putting it in order. Randy, you're up first, so keep yourself ready to roll, brother. Okay. Here we go. Yes, sir. News Radio 840 WHAS. Good Sunday morning. Bob Sekolder of the Louisville Real Estate here with you till the top of the hour. We got a jam-packed show coming at you over the uh, next half hour. So strap in if you're on the road and strap in if you're at home as well. With me is Randy <laughs> Rocky, Swan Financial. He's a great guy, does a great job over there. So do the whole team there. 645-0736 is Mr. Rocky's number. Good to have you here with us, sir. Thank you, Bob. Good morning to you. I was going to say, I can't hear you, but I can. And then we've got Kevin Dissler over at Pitt and Frank Attorneys. They also do a phenomenal job getting the loans closed. 895-9900. You can pick the closing attorney you want, and we recommend Pitt and Frank Attorneys. Good to have you on here. Hey, good morning, real estate colleagues. How y'all doing? We're good. We're good. And then my son, Greg, who does our marketing, photography, and so much more. Ah, good to have you here. So much more, the elusive. And in case you don't know, uh, Bob Sokola here. I uh, have a team of agents uh, over at the Remax Properties East. We're looking to sell and help you to buy as well. Three seven six five four eight three is my direct number. Okay, a lot of things happening. Let's start with a couple of really pieces of good news for anybody who has not refied or still wants to buy a home, and there are a lot. And the answer is, Mr. Rocky, your number, please, your NMLL, whatever number that is. <laughs> Go ahead, hit it. Randy, you're frozen. Hey. Oh, can you hear me? I can now. Try that number can you again. Hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, NMLS number 26362. And, um, you know, interest rates are really good right now. And I still think it's a great time to buy and refinance. Well, the point I'm talking to you here right now is the fact that they fell again. Rates dropped close to 3% again. Yes, that is correct. Uh, and, you know, you can get uh, the 15s and the mid twos. Yeah, to low two, so a fifteen-year fix. So yes, it, it is. Uh, they have dropped, and uh, it's a great time to get in and buy a home or refinance. So what we're hearing is weekly mortgage demand actually jumped eight point six percent after the rates dropped down to about three percent. Are you seeing that uh, concurrently with your group? Yes, and it did get a little slower. I think spring break had something to do with it yeah, as maybe. well. It usually yeah. seems to slow down a little bit during spring break, but yes, I, uh, I do concur. Of course, that means that, Kevin, your place over at Pitt & Frank, that's going to get busy again as refis and new purchases continue to uh, to increase. So be prepared for that. Yeah, it's really never slowed down. Never slowed down. Luxury home sales skyrocketing in the first quarter. Uh, that, according to the recent report from Redfin, the luxury market around the country rose 41.6% year over year in the first quarter of 2021. I know Greg's wife, Casey, has been swamped, and most of the things that she is finding homes, people are in the luxury market. Am I correct, Greg? Yeah, I mean, there, it's, it's been a, a, different, a different piece here this year, seeing how fast we sold one. It was like 1.1, and it sold in a week. Um, you know, obviously the marketing and everything that we do, we try to get the eyes on it, but it's not something that we've seen before. I was, I, I follow the numbers and our absorption rate. Bob sends out our, our Monday market report. Um, and it, this time a month ago, um, there was like around a two, two and a half, three months supply in the luxury market. But now we're actually seeing the past week or the past two weeks, I've been seeing the uh, inventory creep up a little bit. So not as tight of a crunch. And I'm just paying attention to where the interest rates ticked up a little bit. And now they're coming back down. So things, mm -hmm. you know, are, we're, we're following these trends. But certainly, you know, years past, there was like an 11 month supply in certain cases, but we're still down at a two to three month supply most on average, which is, it's crazy. I should tell you that if you don't know what the absorption rate, let me give you a quickie lesson. I think you'll appreciate it. If you turn off the faucet, in other words, like a water faucet, you turn it off, you don't allow any more homes to come on the market. How long would it take the existing homes on the market to be bought or absorbed by the number of buyers that are out there? Not a complicated formula, but we have it done for us. If you want a copy of the absorption rate, uh, as we put it out, and it's a nice, colorful, little free of charge, no obligation. Send me um, an email, bob at we sell louisville.com, and then uh, put absorption rate 
or fact shameless figures. and shameless plug if you yeah. if you have uh, millennials in your blood or if you have anybody in your area send them to my instagram account account i do on mondays when the report comes out monday afternoons i do a little snippet where i talk about what the absorption rate is for the week because it takes week over week numbers uploads them on sundays and then i just do a little piece about where they are and the trends that we're seeing what's your instagram handle uh, yes, the same it's a rookie move. It, it's just, uh, Greg Sokolar. Okay. Just go to Instagram, Greg, S O K O L E R. Greg Sokolar, got it. My phone is ringing, and it looks like more more spam. Even on a Sunday morning, they're calling with spam, or maybe a client. This one came up as a spam. If you want to see a copy of this show, head over to LouisvilleAnswers.com. LouisvilleAnswers.com is a rebroadcast of our show here on 840 WHAS. If you would like to see what people are saying about us, you can go to LouisvilleSellersTalk.com. That will take you to one of our YouTube channels. Or you can read about what people are saying about us, our reviews. You can go to LouisvilleZillow.com. And I know, Greg, we're making a push on um, Google reviews. Is there a, a way for people to see what our group Google reviews are? I'll, I can work something uh, out if we don't. No, I mean, you could just go, literally go to Google, the Socolar team, and it'll yeah. pop up our little business profile. Click the reviews and see. And see read what, what they are. are. So, uh, Randy, I know you've got a home that has been remodeled, but it's older. Am I correct? Yep. That is correct. And Kevin, how about you? Your age of your home is? Probably about 30 years old, and we've probably been in the process of remodeling for about four years now. Okay, so mine is, uh, was, <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of us. Mine and, was and built. contracted Yeah, but right, of course. And mine was built in 55. Greg's in a brand new home. A, an alert coming out for anybody who's shopping for an older home or tr are living in an older home and planning on doing some work. As remodeling surges, some homeowners are discovering old, faulty electric wiring in their home, while others may be creating new problems in the course of a, doing a DIY project, which Kevin was clearly stating he is not doing a DIY <laughs> project electrical problems are increasing emerging uh, because of uh, remote work that is maybe taxing because of schools being at home or older fuse boxes uh, uh, fraying and wiring so be alerted if you're looking for a home and by the way electricians consider electrical systems older than 1980 to be most likely those uh, those most likely to experience problems today that's according to the washington post but the cost to upgrade can quickly mount that electrician will charge you 25 30 bucks an hour to replace the receptacle but homeowners could be charged somewhere three or a thousand or more but in a new fuse box so be alerted on that we talked about this a while ago uh commercial buildings a lot of them being vacant i know greg's been following that but could possibly they be converted into affordable housing that's Dude, I, one love, of the, I love this idea. I think yeah. we should try to find a way to get a nonprofit to expand non-sheltered people as well. Not just, not just, you know, low income, yeah. but non-sheltered as well all across the country. I, I really want to try to follow up on that. So empty hotels, empty buildings, they could be repurposed as vacant um, or new housing space since there's such a, um, a lack of it. Some more news to, that's making uh, headlines around the country. Uh, best time to list midweek, according to a new survey. Now, Greg and I know this, but in this market, it doesn't matter Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It really doesn't matter because it is always a good time to list during this type of a market. Honestly, it's just a way to shelter it into one weekend. It's just a way for the agents to be cleaner and just kind of get everything done at once. Yeah. So just so you know, uh, this report says Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, best time to list and sell your house. You'll make $1,700 more. Uh, if then if it's listed on the weekend not so sure about that that brings us to um forbearance something that we've all been tracking there was a concern that homes were going to be foreclosed on kev can you give us a quick rundown on what forbearance is just so just a couple of sentences well if a forbearance is essentially if you can't make your next few payments the bank basically has forbearance which means they uh, will not make an attempt to collect that. Usually they roll that to the back end of your mortgage. So if you had 20 years left on it and you missed three months, you'd have 20 years and three months to go ahead and pay off your mortgage. So and, the, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just saying that there are a lot of options as we're starting to hopefully roll out of COVID. 
Uh, there are a lot of options available for people. And there, there's, I think I saw a percentage, six to eight percent of uh, all outstanding mortgages are in forbearance. But the CFPB is a good resource for people to take a look at and see what options they have. You're reading my mind. So a couple of quick facts. Almost 50 percent are of the people who went into forbearance. By the way, I love the the uh, soda can that you just took a drink from. Again, if you want to see what Kevin's taking. You know, I, Are you sure a, it's soda? Well, it's not it's soda. A, I know it is. It's a it's a LaCroix type drink. It's but and I I love that brand. So go to um if if you want to see what, dot com. <laughs> yeah, LaCroix, no. If you want to see what Kevin is sipping and it's nothing alcoholic, mind you, um, you can head over Sunday. to our uh, yes, it's our YouTube redirect uh, louisvilleanswers.com. So 50% of the people who are in forbearance are already caught up on payments. Banks don't want houses back, so they're not going to foreclose. That's the latest. There is no political will to foreclose on households, which we were all worried about if something happened down the road with the COVID didn't get out of our lives, which it hopefully will. And if all else fail, homeowners will sell their homes before foreclosures because a foreclosure because they have so much equity in it. But the newest little wrinkle to all this is that uh, the uh, consumer watchdog, which Kevin accurately mentioned, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or the acronym CFPB, said this past Monday that lawyers for the property owners who violate the national ban on evictions, because there is still a national ban, I do believe, Kev could face federal prosecution and other consequences, which is great for people who are having problems and living in homes and not paying rent to landlords. Not so good for the landlords who are having to make their payments to the banks. Thoughts? Well, one, one point I wanted to make before we leave the for, forbearance topic, yep. I talked to a friend of mine who was a banker and what he is seeing, even though you request forbearance, a lot of the banks report that to the credit bureau which adversely affects, uh, he had one client mm. that could not get a refi in because the bank and, and the gentleman had the money, but because he had that and the bank reported on his credit bureau, he had difficulty getting a loan. And Randy, I don't know if Randy's seen that. that and that's, that's exactly where I'm going, Randy, with regards to forbearance, foreclosures. Have you, and again, you may not be the one who sees this, but has Swan seen any uptick in any of the foreclosures, anything like that? Uh, we've not seen an uptick, but I, I really cannot emphasize enough. And, you know, we talked about this in COVID. We have. Uh, how if you don't need to go into forbearance, don't do it. And it causes a lot of problems. And they act like it doesn't. It's not going to. But we see it on credit reports. It's hard to clean up and uh, very challenging. Got it. We're going to stop for a break. Uh, when we come back, we've got some of your emails. Because of, of us being in a COVID condition, we're still doing our shows from our offices, homes, um, wherever it might be, even on the road in some cases. And so we're taking your normal phone call calls as email. So you email me, Bob at WeSellLouisville.com, put in the subject line radio question, and then go ahead and write the question in. We'll get to those in a minute. Plus, something I thought was very interesting, 12 outdoor upgrades that make your home more valuable. As we head into spring, I think a lot of folks are thinking, well, maybe I should try fixing up my home, even if I'm not going to move. So I've got it. We'll go through a quick list on that. Here with us from their individual locations during these COVID shows, Randy Rocky, Swan Financial, 645-0736. Also, Kevin Disler, who's with Pitt and Frank Attorneys. Great guy. They do a great job as well. 895-9900. My son, Greg, who I'm so proud of, does such a great job with his marketing for our team and also the photography that he does is spectacular. And you can reach me. Again, we are still continually looking to sell homes, and we need to list them because we keep selling them. You can reach out to me anytime. We've got buyer agents as well ready to help you buy a whole team. 376-5483 is my direct number. We're back in a moment on News Radio 840 WHAS. News Radio 840 WHIS. Thank you so much, Barbara Cochran. She's a, my mentor, a friend, and does a great job on Shark Tank. With us, this is the Louisville Real Estate Show, by the way, till the top of the hour. We've got Kevin Disler, who's with Pitt and Frank Attorneys. They do a phenomenal job getting the loans closed. You can reach Kev at 895 9900. 
Also, Randy Rocky with Swan Financial, and he does another great job. His whole team over there, 645-0736. My son, Greg, who does our marketing photography and a lot more, joins us as well. And you can reach me, Bob Sekoler, day or night at 376-5483. We would love to help you and uh, show you why we're number one now some 12 years in a row, and been, we've been ranked. We were just ranked uh, one of the top 25 REMAX teams in the country. So I'm uh, thrilled, very, very proud of my group. So 12 upgrades, uh, outdoor upgrades that make your home more valuable. So some of these, Greg, you've already, I know from personal experience, having been um, at your house, I know you've already in, done this, build an outdoor fire pit, or in your case, an outdoor living space with a fireplace, which really does great and gets you money back. In some cases, replace your garage door will get you money back uh, if you are planning on selling or just look make the house. Never under, I've never understood that one. I've, al- that? I've always heard it on the list, the garage yeah. door. Yeah. I've never understood the value. Like, it's a garage door. No, Plus I did it. A piece of plywood. My, well, yeah, actually, no, no. if it's plywood, if it was a plywood garage door nowadays, you might really be into some coin if you got, you know. Well, no, I did that. that. Just for the cost. I Uh replaced the garage doors that were on the house when I bought it. And I think it just looks better. And I feel it's when it's. No, I know. I feel like it's a maintenance thing, like adding a side room with a fireplace. That's a legitimate value piece. Something else I did, uh, this comes out of this report, is uh, replace your front door. So I think that adds a lot of pop to the house, especially if it's brand new. That's one of the first things buyer's going to see if you're planning on selling or even if you live there, if you've got friends coming over. Implement a lawn care program. And I would tell you it's hit and miss on the ones that are out there. If you don't want to do it yourself, some of them, they make claims, but do they really pay off? I don't There's know. a couple of good local ones. Do, do a Google search. I was actually doing a literally yeah. after the fun snow and everything that we dealt with, it's time to fertilize and get everything going. So there's a couple, I'm not, there's a local ones. I'm, I'm trying to couple out, but I've done the big, big box brands, been very unhappy with the service and things yeah. doing the local search way better reviews on service and things of that nature. Why don't you put a report together on a couple that we could talk about down the road, just because I don't want to go willy nilly on this. I just want to, we'll get some names out. Also fix the facade, uh, replace exterior siding. It may sound expensive, not so much according to remodeling magazine, uh, but it's something you need to do. Refresh your landscaping. If your shrubs are overgrown, I would tell you that out of control, it is uh, something you want to think about getting it uh, redone getting the landscape redone adding a deck is always a big plus according to remodeling magazine a 16 by 20 wood deck with stairs actually can bring you back upwards of 100 percent of what you spend on it if you don't have a deck to begin with so think about that install a backyard patio invest in an outdoor kitchen and add outdoor lighting is another thing to consider Again, I've got a whole list of this stuff, and I don't want to spend too much time because we got a lot to go through. But if you want, send me an email. I'll give you that address again in a second. Planting trees will help your property, but don't overplant in the front yard. Install a lawn sprinkler system that also will help bring value back to you. And make sure you make sure you keep up the landscaping because that could be very valuable for, to you and costly if you don't keep it up. If you want a copy of that, send me an email, Bob at we sell Louisville.com, and we will send you a copy put in there. Um, 12 outdoor upgrades. And I'll know what it means. All right, we got some questions. Um, and, and incidentally, uh, speaking of outdoor upgrades, Glenn and Miriam, who are listeners to this show, who I spoke to this week, uh, Glenn and Miriam, their son's house, they've been helping to upgrade it to sell it. And the first, and Kevin, I need your assistance on this. The first guys that they had come in basically ripped them off. They, they gave them the money. And they didn't do the job. So now they've got more people coming in. Uh, what would you say? Never give all the money up front to a, a contractor. Am I correct about that, sir? Def- definitely not. And uh, Better Business Bureau, check to make sure they're insured. That's probably the number one. Um, one is they stole your money. But what happens if somebody slips and falls? Then you got a bigger problem if they're not insured. Mm. Um, so, and, and right now, everybody's really busy. And there are a lot of folks that are trying to rip people off out there in the market at this time. So uh, Glenn and Miriam, sorry about what had happened to you, but I uh, listen, but just ho- keep going forward and we'll be checking back with them and get their home on the market. Hopefully as soon as it's ready. Randy, if you'll unmute yourself question from Ava and Ava's asking why, sh- and Kevin, you may have to come on this as well. Why should I have to pay for mortgage title insurance and owner's title insurance? 
Aren't they say, aren't they the same? Do I really need it? So let's start, Randy, from a uh, lender perspective. Why is mortgage title insurance so important? Right. So on lender's title insurance, you have to if you take a loan out because the lender requires it in case there are any liens that uh, on title search that did not happen with the title company or uh, sometimes some uh, uh, scenarios where the the house is not on the actual piece of land. I mean, there, there are all kinds of scenarios where they cover themselves with title insurance. And then I don't ever sell uh, anyone without owner's title as well, uh, because of the simple fact of it's a policy, an insurance policy for the owner as well. And a quick example is I had a client call me now about five years ago saying that they owe, they just had a certified letter. They, uh, the people before them, they pulled the, uh, the title search. It did not show up on the lien. It didn't show up as a lien when they bought the house. They owe $42,000 plus 12% interest a year. I said, do you have owner's title insurance? He goes, that's why I'm calling you. I don't. I oh, said, boy. you have to pay the lien. It's terrible. Uh, so I recommend both. And uh, Kevin, you might want to. Yeah, I want to uh, I want to send it over to Kevin. Well. So, so Kev, it would be, someone would say, I, uh, I lost my connection. I miss you. I'm back. Yeah. Why wouldn't an attorney have pulled the deed to make sure there were no liens against the house at the time of closing in this case that randy said with forty two thousand. well you usually you run standard here as a 30-year title search and occasionally you can have something where the clerk made a mistake something was not indexed properly you have certain situations where there's fraud involved in the records um, you also have the right to rely upon certain official records as being legitimate We've had some situations where you have things like court orders, uh, orders from probate court, um, and another, another situation that you can have someone that was an illegitimate child that pops up two years later that was defrauded from the estate. You really, I, I can't stress this much. It's it's a it's, it's costly, but it's it's almost you you should not buy a piece of real estate without title insurance. And just to, to finalize the one she mentioned. What was the difference between a lender's policy and an owner's, owner's title? So correct. Yeah. The issue is, and let's say you're buying a house for 200,000. The loan is 100. Over time, the 30 years, the loan policy goes from 100 to zero in risk. The owner's policy goes from the 100,000 in equity to when the loan is paid off 200,000. So that's the reason that the lender's risk is covered by the one policy the owner's risk is covered by the other. The owner's risk over time will get larger as more and more equity is built up in the property. The lender's risk diminishes over time. So that's why there's two different premiums, one for each, because of the level of risk that they're taking. And folks, remember that you have 30 days from the time you close to be able to purchase the owner's title insurance. Uh, you have to purchase the uh, mortgage title insurance at the time of closing. Correct on that, Kev? That's correct. Yep. You do have 30 days to purchase the other policy. All right. We move on at this point. Um, let, Mira is uh, asking, when I buy, when can I buy a home? She says, I was one of the people who lost their homes uh, with uh, job problems and not pay for my mortgage last year. She says, since then, um, she's been renting. I guess she moved out before the standards for COVID came in, but she wants to know if she can buy a home because her rent's about to go up. So Randy Rocky, if you would unmute, give us a rundown. What type of time frame? I don't know what type of loan she had, but obviously now she's maybe was behind and now caught up and back working. Well, it just depends on Bob, you know, if, if it went into foreclosure or not, if it didn't go into foreclosure, then we, we are in a situation where, if we can't get an approval, we can do it now. If she went into foreclosure, you know, it's between, it's it's a minimum of two years if she actually went through those proceedings. So we just say, I would have to look at that. Is that regardless of whatever, whatever type of loan, whether it's FHA or conventional or VA, is that the same? No, uh, a great question. Uh, FHA is two years uh, uh, at once the uh, foreclosure is actually released and the date of the release and on on uh conventional it, it's it's i think i should know this exactly but i think it's five years i'm almost okay. positive 
So it fluctuates based. I know on FHA type of is definitely yeah. too. And yes. how can yes. how can someone like Mira find out f- for sure? Can they mm-hmm. call their loan officer, she, the mortgage company? Yeah, she could call yeah. me. Okay. Right, right. She could call or whoever you know another another company, and and she will have to have her credit pulled, and then they can they can go from there. They can look at the scenario once they pull credit. Got it. Got it. Kev, we'll wrap up with this question to you from uh, Mason. Mason says, I'm having a problem with the house I just sold. He says, on the disclosure, I wrote that the roof leaked and it was repaired. And then they closed about five months ago. And the buyer now says the roof is leaking and wants me to repair it. So does Mason have to repair the roof or can Mason let it go since he had it repaired? Would he furnish documents for the repairs? How would you suggest that Mason proceed? Yeah, I would think that if he just had a legitimate uh, local roofing company do the repair, he just provides the paperwork on that. Most of them will have some type of a warranty. They stand behind their work. And if it's a fairly short period of time, so I would think that would probably be covered under the warranty that the seller had. What would the normal warranty for, I guess each one's different, how a roofing company... Uh, whether they warrant it for a year or six months, maybe the, the well, real, yeah, good. And when you have a change of ownership, but if I'm doing the repair uh, during the process of selling my home, uh, most of the time, if agents will have make sure that whatever warranty they provide will be to the new owner as well. Uh, and and it, it's kind of hard based on the question about the extent of, of, of the repairs that were done. Does he, and we've talked about this in past weeks, does Mason face any fear of being sued or going to small claims court over this? Well, you, you can go through the, the process in the GLAR contract is mediation for an issue like this. Mm-hmm. But if he's a seller, as long as he accurately disclosed what he knew and the, and the buyer had the opportunity to have the property inspected, he really, he, he does not have much exposure of course you can be sued for anything yeah. uh people can take you for to mediation for anything but mm-hmm. as long as he accurately disclosed the issue and say he had a very good local roofing company do the work and he's got the paperwork what has he done wrong now that they could claim that perhaps the extent of the issue was not fully disclosed and that's where you get in kind of the weeds of the issue um you know was he aware that the roof was entirely defective and he just repaired a small portion of it so uh, it, it kind of gets into the point, did he fully uh, explain to the buyer the full extent of, of the issue, the problem? But that, I guess, would, be, would rest in the, also the lap of the company that did the repairs, since it was their responsibility to review the roof and make suggestions at the uh, owner's request of what needs to be done to bring it up to proper standards. So he would reflect back to the, uh, the company that did the repairs, correct? Correct. That's all the seller can really do is bring in a, a professional to take a look and, and do repair and right. sign off on it. That's all you can really do. Hopefully that helps you, Mason. Uh, don't lose any sleep over it. And if you need to, I'll give you Kevin's number in just a bit. You can check more with him. Just a reminder, we have a free no obligation booklet that has hundreds of useful tips to getting your home ready to sell and to sell and then the process of selling. If you want a copy, again, free, no obligation, send me an email, bob at we sell louisville.com and put selling tips in the subject line. All right, we are out of time. My thanks, as always, to our dear friends, Kevin Disler, Pitt and Frank Attorneys, 895-9900. Also, Randy Rocky, Swan Financial, 645-0736. My son, Greg, who even at this moment is busy getting uh, listings ready to sell. He does our marketing, photography, and so much more. Good to have all of you here, gentlemen. Yes, and then, of course, you can Good reach course. me anytime because, uh, listen, that's what I do is get these homes listed and sold. We would love to help you. Uh, and no home is too big. No home is too small. We would sell a $10,000 home, which we've done in the past. You can reach me at 376-5483. Again, 502-376-5483. We are out of time. I will see you next Sunday right here on News Radio 840 WHAS. All right, gents. I had my laptop completely rebuilt, and I'm still having a little problems with the ports. 
Hey, hey. That's like Come on, man. I know how much you love technology issues. I do <laughs> love technology issues, but I also hate <laughs> when I get into the weeds with the problems, you know? It's crazy. In- is this an Apple, Apple product? Is what? Apple product? Oh, yeah. It's an Apple, Apple product? I'm, Apple, Apple, Apple all the way, buddy. Yes, but it's a Bob issue. It's not an Apple issue. It's oh, not it's, like it's they sell them like this. This is, this is. They told him, they brought it in, and they were like, Bob, this is probably your fault. We'll rebuild it for you. Yeah. Uh, if you want the same computer, you could buy a new one. And he's no, no, like, not, just rebuild it. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to build a new one or, or buy a new one yet. They're going to come up with a new oh, one, yeah. then I'll buy it. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. My thanks for you all. I will uh, see all of you next couple of weeks. All right. You guys take care. Thank Thanks. you. All right. See you. Be good. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye.